What's good, YouTube? Steph here, and welcome to Theta Space. Today, I'm going to be ranking the nine studio albums by the Japanese prog rock group Kenso. <laughs> So, I don't have a whole lot of information about Kenso. Back in 2000, 2001, I started getting into anime, and as a result, I dove headfirst into Japanese language, culture, and music, because that's what I tend to do when I get a new interest. I go completely overboard. It's probably related to my spectrum disorder. Anyway, since I'd already been a progressive rock fan since the mid-80s, I started into wondering whether there were any Japanese prog bands. I ended up finding a few, including Ars Nova, which is a keyboard-based drums trio, as well as Gerard, Happy Family, Bellafon, and Bikyo Ron, who actually started out playing covers of Wetton era King Crimson numbers before they started writing their own material. But the best of them for my money was Kenso. Here's what little I do know about Kenso. They were formed in the 70s by guitarist multi-instrumentalist Yoshihisa Shimizu, and after a few years he broke the band up so that he could con concentrate on finishing medical school. And clearly he succeeded because he's now Dr. Shimizu, or Shimizu-sensei as he'd be called in Japan, and he has a dental practice as his day job. He got the band back together and they released their first album in 1980, and as far as I can tell, they're still active today, although their last album came out eight years ago. They've released a total of nine, not including live albums or a collection of their 70s recordings, and those are the nine albums I'm going to cover here. I plan on doing full reviews of all of these albums in future, so I'm going to try to not go too deep as I give them my ranking here. So number nine at the bottom of my list is Esoptron, released in 1999. Earlier Kenso music was more in the vein of symphonic prog rock or jazz fusion. A couple of reviewers on Prog Archives have likened them to Hatfield in the North and Brand X, two bands that I know pretty much nothing about. I've listened to some Brand X, the first couple of Brand X albums on YouTube uh, in the past week. I like it a lot and I kind of hear uh, where that comparison comes from. I still got to check out Hatfield in the North. All I know about them is that they're a Canterbury scene band. All I know about Canterbury is basically Gong and Steve Hillage. Uh, that's all the Canterbury music that I'm familiar with. Anyway, uh, Esoptron, this album, uh, drops a lot of the progginess and goes in more of a hard rock direction. For example, the opening track is a heavy guitar-driven rocker, as are Zaya Karano Kikan and Gips, or G-I-P-S, and the second or last track, Release Yourself. That's more than half of the album's runtime there. There are also a bunch of short tracks that only last a couple of minutes, so I don't think too terribly highly of those. The only track on this one that I really think stands up with their back catalog is Negai Kaneru Kodomo wo Tsurete Yuko. It starts as a guitar and bass duet that uh, plays the same figure twice, and then it goes into a pretty heavy rock groove, but still pretty proggy. What drags this album down the most is the production. It sounds kind of like it was recorded in a garage or basement. So next one up is the self-titled 1980 debut album at number eight. I almost ranked this one last, but the good tracks are really proggy. Nihon no Mugi Uta. Ine no Fue and Umi really shine. The lowlights for me are Furio Rosareta Yaiba, which is the only one with vocals and shows that Kenso made the right decision to go instrumental, although it's otherwise a good proggy track. And the 15 minute Kagome, which has a lot of chanting and not much music, and it just seems to meander and dawdle without any purpose. I'm not counting any CD bonus tracks on this or any other album as I rank them, just going by what was on the original release. For number seven, I've got Yume no Oka from 1991. Some great tracks here, uh, The Signification of Time, The Ancient in My Brain, Alfama, and the album opener Les Fezas de la Lune 1, and also From the Mystic Woods with a great lead melody played on a fretless bass. I knock points off this record for the two OIA tracks, and plus Mediterranean and Aryan and the Fourth Reich just aren't as good as the rest. My number six is Utsuroi Yukumono from 2006. 
This is the second album after Esoptron, and uh, like its predecessor, Fabulous Mirabilibus Bombicosi Scriptus, it continues to be proggy, jazzy, fusiony music while uh, still maintaining the heaviness that they started getting into with Esoptron, but in my judgment, not as well as the album that came before it. It's also got on a couple of tracks Keiko Kawashima on vocals, or Cante Flamenco y Palmas, as she's credited in the album notes. It seems her lyrics are in Spanish, but her Japanese accent is very noticeable. Uh, still, there's lots of good music on this album. It rocks, but I gotta put it in the bottom half of the ranking because the earlier album did it better. The second album from 1982 is my number five. It's a marked improvement over the debut. It's got Shining in the Sky, Brand X or IX. I think that's a reference to Brand X. Arrivederci Prague and Anesthesia Part 2. Really great tracks, but the rest is just okay, so it sits right in the middle of the list at number five. Moving into the upper division, number four is Uchinado Koi no Kaiki Seo, their most recent album released in 2016. I don't have a copy of this album. I first became aware of it a few months ago when checking Kenso's listing at Prague Archives, and I've been listening to it a couple of dozen times over the past month on YouTube. Like the other two 21st century albums, it continues to be somewhat heavy, but also very proggy fusion-y. There's another female vocalist on this record who sings on a couple of tracks, but she's very operatic or classically styled, unlike Keiko Kawashima's Kante Flamenco singing. Her voice is very pleasant to listen to, and Kawashima sounds kind of shrill compared to her. Number three is... Fabulous Mirabilibus di Bombicosi Scriptus. I believe the Japanese title is Birodosho Kitan. This is the 2002 follow-up to Esoptron. I'm guessing that Shimizu was wanting to go heavier with Kenso's music around the turn of the century, and Esoptron was his experimentation in that direction, but not quite pulling it off. But with this record, I'd say he got it right. It opens with a balls-to-the-wall rocker, Fists of Fury, then it settles down with the very proggy, the cunning madrigal with long, intricate lead lines. The rest of the record is a near-perfect mix of heavy fusion and symphonic-type prog, although it's the album that introduced vocalist Keiko Kawashima on the second-to-last track, A Grim Diary. She's only on that one track and only on one short verse, so I don't mind her so much as on the next album, Utsuro Yukumono. Second favorite for me is the third album, or Kenso 3, it just says Kenso on the cover, from 1985. Where the second album was kind of fusion-y prog, this record is more proggy fusion. This album's got some great tracks like Power of the Glory, Liberty of Spirit, Sacred Dream 2, and Beginnings, which ironically closes the album. Or maybe not so ironically, since Kenso followed that one with Sparta in 1989. I got the remixed CD re-release Sparta Naked, but I've listened to the original on YouTube and I don't hear any significant difference between the two, and really it's the composition and the performances that make this the top album for me. It opens strong with uh, Good Days, Bad Days, and follows that with probably my favorite Kenso track, Bifuka, which I understand is a town in Hokkaido. But there are no weak tracks on this album for me. I've been listening to all the albums recently to be sure of my ranking, uh, thinking maybe I've overrated this record or underrated another, like Three or Yume no Oka, but I don't think I have. Uh, this is the one, Sparta. It wasn't easy to make this list. I knew what my bottom two were, and I had a pretty good idea of what my top two were, but it took a lot of consideration combined with repeated listenings to confirm the top picks and put the other five into an order that I felt okay with. But these are all good albums. Even the bottom two I'll still listen to once in a while, or at least listen to selected tracks. I've also made a mix CD of my favorite Kenso tracks back around uh, 2008 or 9. I don't exactly remember what year it was, but it was around that time. And it represents all the records except the last one. Uh, not too long ago, I uploaded it to YouTube, and you can hear some of these tracks as my personal best-of collection. I'll link that uh, video in the description, and also put it up in the end card. So, any Kenso fans out there? What do you think? How would you rank these albums? Do you agree or disagree with my order? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and please hit the subscribe button and notification bell. They don't cost anything. I'm hoping to put up more content soon, probably an album review, though I don't know which one yet. So keep watching this space if you're interested. Steph out. Peace.